Let's go to Matthew 15 and 8. So chapter 15, verse 8. To the left is the King James Version. To the right is the Expanded Bible. This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. So what is this saying here? This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips. So for an example, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. God, I will do everything for you. I am never going to sin anymore. I am a changed person person. You are honoring God with your lips, with those words. Let's continue. But their heart is far from me. So what does that mean there? You are not following God's rules and regulations. You are saying all of those good things. You are saying very good testimonies. You are praising God so well with your words, but when it comes down to actually living that type of life, you are not about that life. <laughs> you are not doing what the Bible is telling you to do. So you are only speaking a very good game, but you are not living what you are speaking. It makes me think of the Pharisees, where the Pharisees were extremely, were really intelligent. <clears throat> they were very, very smart. They knew the law of Moses, but they were corrupt. They were sinners. And how can you teach anyone? How can you show anyone the way when you are corrupt? Yes, you have head knowledge, but what good is your head knowledge if your life does not display how God wants us to live. You are just, we are supposed to be the salt of the world. If we are only about words and not about that life, how can we change people? How can we have a major or place a major effect or affect this world? How can we? If we are not living holy, we lose our saltiness. It is our saltiness that is changing the world. So if we lose that, what good are we? We are just like everyone else if we can't live the way that God wants us to live. I pray that this makes sense. So be more than words. Let me say this too. Ever since I was a baby, I would go to church. Now, there was a period of time where I was not going to church as much or at all. Then I started to come back to church. Anyways, I started to notice the loudest people in church Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. 
the ones that would dance all around the church, the ones that would give excellent testimonies, I would find out that those are the people who struggled or struggles in sin. Why do I say that? They are more concerned with their outward image. Now, I am not saying in every single case that is what it is, but in the cases that I have seen, the ones that really act outwardly all hyper and stuff like that in church, that is a show. What this scripture is saying, stop making a show. It is better to be silent if you can't follow God's rules and regulations. What good is it to do all of these great things in church, but when you go home, you are right back into your sins again? What purpose is that? Vain. God sees what you are doing. Yes, you are trying to impress people, but why are you trying to impress people? At the stake of your soul. Yes, you can make people clap their hands and say, hey, this person is really close to God, but at the end of the day, if you die right after that, if your life is not right with God, you are going to hell afterward. This is not a show. This is not a game. This is, you should be trying to seek out a personal relationship with God, not seek attention from people. The Pharisees were seeking attention from people, trying to show themselves as this holy person, but in truth, they were as big as sinners, they were as big as sinners of the people that they were teaching. They were corrupt. If the leadership is corrupt, <laughs> the people are going to be corrupt as well. You may find a person here or there that is not, but <laughs> if the leadership is corrupt, chances are the congregation is going to be corrupt too. I pray that this makes sense. It is better for you to sit down and actually listen in church other than standing up and, oh, thank you, Jesus, stuff like that. Vain, vanity vanity be true to yourself listen man what if some new people come to your church and let's say they know nothing of God and they watch you and other people act really hyper in church then when you leave church you are cursing smoking having sex before marriage then when you go back to church you act all holy and stuff like that what are you doing you are you are showing those people how to ruin their relationship with God because they are going to think, hey, this is how you serve God. You serve God by being a hypocrite. They are going to believe that is how you serve God. And you are going to send many people to hell. The largest part of your ministry is the way that you live your life. People are looking at you more than they listen to you. So you are not living for yourself. Myself, 
I am not living for God for myself. I know that I am being watched and I want to make sure that not only I am living for God, but when people see me, I am a good example of how to live for God. Because part of your ministry, even if you don't want to teach, even if you don't want to be a mentor, people are still looking at you. No matter what. It can't be helped. So you are either going to minister to a person things of God, or you are going to minister to people things of demons. Pick and choose. You are honoring God with your words. What good is that if your heart, if you are not following, obeying God? Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. There is nothing wrong with saying that. But if you are sinful and don't really intend to change, what are you doing? You are mocking God. That is what you are doing. You are mocking God. It does not matter how much you know about the Bible. If you can't put it in action, what good is that knowledge? I can quote to you these scriptures, 500 scriptures, but I am not doing it, as in I am not living that life. Only head knowledge, head knowledge alone is not going to get you anywhere with God. He rathers have you know less and actually do what you know. There are plenty of people that have so much knowledge about God. The Pharisees were really smart too, but they were corrupt. And God was not with corrupt people or he would teach against that so I pray that this makes sense be a doer of the word not just a hearer not just a speaker <laughs> but a doer makes sense I pray that it does. God bless.